Hello, and welcome to episode 14 of MidSense. So don't you dare look back, just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up, better dance with me. This woman is my destiny. She said, My name is Jan. Um, you can find me as Jan Allen RN on Ravelry, uh, also on Instagram, on Twitter, um, on Facebook, Snapchat, which I don't use too often because I haven't figured it out yet. But you can always you can always try. Um, this week uh, we are going to be doing some housekeeping. We have some works in progress. Um, a lot about the Ravelenix, uh, what we're going to be doing for the Ravelenix, and what we're going to be frogging for the Ravelenix. Yes, I have made that decision. Um, I don't have any spinning. I don't have any FOs, but I do have some spinning and a little bit of spinning um, enabling. And I do have a little bit of enabling. Um, I couldn't resist. So I'll show you what it is and, and you'll see. So let's jump right in. Uh, I don't know if it's as hot where you are as it is here, but somebody turned the thermostat up to broil. And it is absolutely brutal outside. It's somewhere in the 90s, but it's so humid that it, it's got to be, it, it feels like it's over 110 out there. So I hope if it's as warm where you are that you are coping with the heat and that you are doing well and that you are enjoying the end of your summer. Um, I think that's really about it. It's been a pretty decent week, so let's keep things calm. So we're going to plunge right into our works in progress. My goal for the Ravelenix is to um, work on whips. And that's where I've been at. So I showed two whips last week that I was going to work on. So I'm going to dive into the first one, which is the, it's called the Botanica cardigan. But to me, I absolutely think it's more of a vest. It's, um, I don't have the picture here, and I don't even think I brought the, as organized as usual. Um, but basically what it is, is you knit this medallion circle, which that, part I had had done. And this becomes the center of the back. And then you knit a really kind of a huge piece that goes all the way around. So you end up with one huge circle. And when you sew the border on, you leave two openings for your arms to go through. So there are no sleeves. So to me, that, that kind of qualifies it more as a vest than than a sweater. So this I showed last week. This is the medallion center. I think it's called the Botanica Medallion Cardigan. Um, this is the medallion part. So that's done. And last week I was somewhere down here on the piece that's going to go around. So you can see I did make a fair amount of progress on the border part. Um, I can say, when I uh, recorded last week, I had read on someone's Ravelry page, actually I think it was a few people, suggested using straight needles instead of um, interchangeables or even fixed circulars. Because this part, the Indian cross stitch, you wrap the stitches around your needle three times, and then on the following row, you drop the extra wraps and you cross the stitches, which is all well and good. It's not difficult. It's not hard to do. But as you knit, it becomes very, very tight. And it was near impossible to get them over the join. Doing it on straight needles has made a world of difference much, much easier. I'm showing the wrong side is what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> I've actually, it's, this is all four rows. It's just a four row pattern. And I've actually gotten to the point now, which you would think after all this, that I can, I've memorized the pattern. So it's, it's pretty <clears throat> straightforward knitting. I'm sorry, I have such a frog in my throat. Every time I sit down, <clears throat> drink time. <sighs> that, 
I stick. <clears throat> so it's much easier to knit, but I find that it's not a hard pattern. This is definitely not difficult to do, but this yarn is very hard on my hands. I, it's a, uh, I believe it's 50% cotton, 50% viscose. And I'm sure it's going, it, it's not stiff, but it's kind of, I don't even want to say rough. It's just, doesn't give. It doesn't have much give to it. And when you're knitting three together, or you're doing cabling, which there's a cable here, and then you're essentially cabling when you cross these stitches here. And it's very, very hard on the hands. So I can only do so many rows before my fingers just give out. You're like clutching at it almost. Um, and the more I try to just not and relax with it, it's, it makes me more tense. But I am making progress on it. Will it be done by the end of the Olympics? I don't know. I'm, I'm certainly trying. This is the only thing that I have worked on. Well, actually, no, I did one row on something else. I'll show you. Um, but this is essentially the only thing I have been working on since last week. So that is my progress. I am not even halfway from just, you know, measuring it, holding it up against the medallion. But we're going to keep pressing on. I hope to actually block this later on today um, because you really do need to get it flat and in accurate sizing on it. Excuse me while I turn off the cuckoo clock. Lord. <clears throat> I'm going to be prepared. One day I'm going to be completely prepared. Absolutely going to sit down and things are going to go like clockwork. No pun intended. Maybe not. Okay, moving on. Um, so at any rate, I will be blocking this medallion, wherever it went, um, later today, so that you can get a very accurate, because you need to knit the border until it fits exactly around the center part. And you really can't tell that accurately until this part is blocked. So that's what's on the agenda, blocking this later, and then continuing pressing on with the border, which fortunately, like I said, since I have memorized the four rows, it's not, I don't have to take my iPad with me or the pattern or whatnot, so I am able to do a little bit more knitting on it than I was when I was kind of tied to the pattern. So that's that. The other thing that I stopped for um, and decided to also continue, because I am further along in this pattern, I am going to pull it up. Actually, no, I don't have to. I have the paper pattern. Look at that. This is a whip that's been sitting around, I'm going to say, for about four years. And it is the Cleo pattern by Romy Hell. I have had this around now for quite some time. Let's see if I can dig out a picture of it. Here it is. <laughs> okay, that is what the pattern looks like. And when I stopped, and I I have such a habit, it's like when I'm over something, I'm over it. And I'm usually over it when it's done, when it's just nearly done. And then when I go years later to pick it up, it's like, why did I stop? I was almost finished. I am on this lace, literally on the last row of this lace panel here. This part's all knit. And I don't know if you can see from the picture, but there is a really pretty braid that separates each one of these sections. So I had done the first braid, I did, this is now almost all complete, I'm on the last row and I'm up to the second braid. So this actually has a much better chance of getting finished before um, Rebel Lennox is over than the other does. So I figured, well, I don't wanna be a total failure and not be able to have, have something to, to finish and to enter. So. I picked this back up and I picked it up. This actually I had started before I even got Knit Companion, which I have been completely dependent on now for years. So this is an oldie and it wasn't in Knit Companion. I didn't know where I was. I marked, I'm so smart, I put tape across the pattern. Well, I don't want to show the whole pattern, but the pattern where I was on it, but I couldn't tell. Was I on the row below? Was I on the... 
So I sat there for about 20 minutes trying to figure it out. And then when I went to pick it up, I realized I had a row counter on it. So I knew exactly where I was. That's, that's typical me. So here it is. Here's my Clio. I am knitting this out of yarn that is no longer being made. It's out of Sangman Griffin. I don't even know if I still have the bands because one was Purple Swallowtail. I'm not sure what the other one was. It, it is on my Ravelry page and I'll try to put it in the um, description bar below. But here's what I have so far. Um, this is the right side. And so there it starts with all garter basically. And then we are into this lace section. And here you can see much better the braid. And I thought it was really, really pretty braid um, that goes right across here. And I am on the last row of the lace pattern. So I will be repeating that braid here, doing another lace row and another braid and then the edging. So I think I will stand a good chance of getting this done before Ravelenix is over. So my only concern is if I start working on something else that I'm not going to be so anxious to finish my Botanica. So I have to find some sort of balance there, maybe just force myself to do it for two hours a day or something to that effect because I'm really now seeing it getting done So I and I want to wear it so much that it's keeping me motivated. So hopefully um, with a deadline in mind, I will be able to to complete that. So these are two of the projects that I have going now. That's both um, for the whip wrestling for Ravelenix. Also last week, I showed <clears throat> another work in progress, and that was my Literati cardigan. And this is a sad story. I <clears throat> had explained last week that I had done the back, I did the right front, I did a sleeve, and I did the left front. And the left front was so horribly off from the right front. It was like a two inch difference. Um, the cables were all off, it, it was a hot mess. And the more I thought about it, because I would have to rip that out, I'm not loving it. I'm really just not feeling the love. So, this is going to go in the frog pond. Yes, I am going to frog this whole thing. I'm going to salvage the yarn. I actually even have a project in mind for the yarn after Ravelenix is over. But I just, you know, if I could see me wearing this or like I know that vest I will wear to death. I love it. Um, this just, I don't know, it's just not my style anymore. I don't think I'm going to get much wear out of it. And even though it's almost done, I can't see ripping out the whole front, knitting another sleeve, and then all of that seaming and the button bands for something that I just don't think I'm going to enjoy. So I think the best thing to do is frog it, not let it sit any longer, kidding myself that I'm going to get it done, throw it into the frog pond, be done with it, and press on to something else. So that's the story with, with that one. And along that same theme, I went digging a little bit further. And this, oh my goodness, has been on the needles. I can't, that's not even the pattern. I can't even say how long this has been on the needles. This is, um, let's see if I can find a picture. It is a cowl. It is, I don't want to give the pattern away, but it is the Moose River Cowl. It is a Stephen West pattern, I think. Yes, it is a Stephen West pattern. I've been knitting on this since, I, I, I don't even want to say how long I've been knitting on it for. And I'm knitting, and I'm knitting, and I'm knitting. And I'm not getting too far. And it is a lovely pattern. I can't say it's not. It was a lot of it was enjoyable, but obviously not enough to make me want to continue with it anymore. And this is using Madeline Tosh 
something, something. I don't know. Let's see. Madeline Tosh. Sock. No. It's not. It's it's definitely oh um Tosh Vintage in Smoky Orchid is the colorway. And I'm sick of it. I can't look at it anymore. I want the bag back. I want my needles back. I, I want my toys back from all these UFOs, FOs, whatever. So the long shot of that is it's going in the frog pond. That is getting frogged. And I'm sitting here looking and this was in the bottom of the bag. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I don't know what yarn it is. I don't know what it was. Obviously, I pulled the needles off of it and let it sit. Frog bond. I think this bag is empty now, except for two point protectors, which I can probably use. So that is, and yeah, I think this gives you an idea of when this was started. Um, on the bag is the pin from the Ravelenics of 2012. I think this has sat long enough. And is it, look at the bag. I want the bag back. I want to use this for something else. This is so cute. I love this bag. I don't even know. Let's see. This is by the Silver Pumpkin. How cute is that? I want my bag. I'm getting my bag back. I'm ripping all that stuff. So there goes that. Okay. This project is a whole nother story. So we have the Botanica cardigan slash vest and the Clio. There's one other project that I cannot rip. I have been working on this project for I don't know how long. I started this um, really before I became too proficient in lace and I was in way over my head. And also I started it before Knit Companion and that was a big problem because I can't see. The project, by the way, is the Rock Island Shawl. So I think you can already see <laughs> what, what my issues here were. The chart from this <clears throat> was so teeny weeny. I tried enlarging it I couldn't follow it. I was making stupid mistakes from just really not being able to see it. <clears throat> well, I was able, I repurchased the pattern. I actually, what is this? I wrote, I tried writing notes to reverse the symbols. It, it was just a hot mess. Like I said, I was in way over my head. But I absolutely love this shawl. I have seen it in person at Nitty City in, in Manhattan. It is absolutely beautiful. The yarn is just absolutely amazing. So I never wanted to rip it. But now that I have it in Knit Companion, I'm able to, it's, it's going so much easier. It's actually not even a difficult pattern. It was just difficult for me at the time. So I have it now in Knit Companion. And I'm actually, literally, almost past the entire lace part and up to nearly where the rest of it is just garter. So this is what I have. I have pulled this out of the bin yesterday. Okay, let's see if I can just find a spot where I don't have to untangle the whole thing. But here you can see what I have done. And again, I am almost past the lace, the Rock Island lace, which is what this part here is, and the rest is basically just garter. So it's not difficult. So I'm going to restart this. I know I have very lofty goals, and what will end up happening is probably everything will be almost finished right at the end of the Revelenics, but not quite. But that's okay. I'm fine with that. It's just getting these things going and off the needles. And I have made an absolute rule. I am not allowed to cast on anything, nothing new, not even any recent whips am I working on. Old whips only, frogging or finishing during the Ravelenics. So this is going into the, the working on now pile. So I will be alternating 
between those three projects. So that is what is on my needles and down in the frog pond for this week. And so hopefully we will have made some sort of progress on something for next week. And that's the end of my whips. That's all I have, works in progress and whatnot. So this episode looks like it's gonna be a lot shorter than last week's. Um, what else? I don't have any spinning because I didn't enter any, I wasn't gonna get involved in any spinning um, categories for Ravelenix. I knew that that was biting off much more than I could chew. But I did replace something and I really just wanted to, I actually haven't even taken it out of the envelope yet. From the number of interruptions that I get when I sit down to record, it actually seems like I'm so popular. And I have to crack up because otherwise the phone doesn't ring, the doorbell doesn't ring, nothing. It only happens when I sit down to actually record. And like I said, if my editing skills were any better, I would just edit the whole thing out. But I'm lucky I can get done when I get done when I edit. So it is live. I can vouch for that. Anyway, full disclosure, when I was at SSK last year, I had purchased an AcreWorks bobbin for my, um, my shaft wheels. And <laughs> my dog ate it. Oh yes. I had actually left it in the bag where all my SSK stuff was for months and months and months. I finally cleaned out my closet. I cleaned everything up. I was like, oh my God, I forgot I had this. This is great. I took it downstairs. And by the time I turned my back, uh, the dog had shoot the whole thing to bits. So that really kind of annoyed me. It's not like I was using it. I hadn't used it in months, but that kind of ticked me off that she ate it. So I went and I ordered another one and it came this week and I can't, oh, here we go. Got it out of the bag. So I am really, really anxious to try this. I don't know if you've seen these. I can't believe, I mean, I'm sure most people have seen these around. Oh, God. Jeez, take the answer, gorgeous George. But anyway, let's see if we can hook this thing up. Well, there we go. Okay. It's basically, they make bobbins for... All different, almost almost every kind of wheel now, I think, um, they make a bobbin for. And it's done with a 3D printer. And at SSK, he actually showed us how he does these on the 3D printer. And it really is absolutely amazing. But what's really unique and what I love about these, and I really was anxious to try, is that as you spin, if you're familiar with the regular bobbins, they're solid, usually on one side, or on both sides actually. So you can't actually see what is going on inside the bobbin. These are open. So as you're spinning and filling the bobbin, you can start to see um, your color progressions. You can see what you're spinning. Um, and it, it's just, to me, that makes it even more fun to see it as you're, as you're spinning it, other than just looking at the top of the bobbin. So, well, this may be stuck for life. At any rate, that is my spinning enhancement and my exercise for the day. Um, so we're gonna give that a try and hopefully after Ravelenix is over, um, I will go back to spinning and give you a chance to see what something looks like on that bobbin. And along those lines, I do have some other enhancement. Two things, two things, three things that I'd love to show you because I was really fascinated by them. First, actually, this is an extra. I don't know if you are have seen these, but I have a tremendous amount of things to block. And uh, T-pins, as good as they are, you know, they're time consuming. So I had purchased, you can get these, gosh, I, I don't know. I think I got them. I'm going to say I got them from Nitpicks. I got one set. I have two. I got one set from my local yarn store, and I do believe there are a lot of local yarn stores that do sell them. Um, I, I want to say you can get them on Amazon. I think so. I also think that you can get them at Knit Picks. What they are is um, knit blockers. This. Oh, 
Oh, looky. This one has instructions. The first set I got didn't. So it even comes with instructions now. But what they are is they are, I would consider them multiple pins. Okay, so instead of using like, I don't know, six or seven T pins, you stretch out and you just stick this in instead and it holds a big section. And it comes with a bunch of these blockers. There we go. And it also comes with a bunch, a couple of smaller ones. So if you're pinning out points, if you're pinning out curves or little areas, you can use these smaller blockers. And combined with, I use the wires that I use, unless I'm blocking something that I really want a firm edge on, in which case I use standard um, blocking wires, I usually use the lace blocking wires from Infinity. And between those wires, being able to shape them any way that you need to, you can curve them. You can actually even put them into points and then use these blockers to hold the point sharp. It makes a wonderful, wonderful tool for blocking, blocking things, blocking items the way that you really, really want them to be. So I would highly recommend these. Again, they are by Knitter's Pride. They are called knit blockers. I know a lot of yarn stores do carry them. Again, I, um, I know that you can purchase them at several places online. I will look and I will try to link it below, um, put a link in so that you can, you can find those. So that was one thing. This other thing that I got, I had gone into my local yarn store and she had been to TNNA and I'm always looking for what's new, what's out there, what's different. And I saw this and I'm not sure how much use I'm going to get out of it, but it was so unique and so different. I absolutely had to get this. It is by, let's see, I believe it's Coco Knits, C-O-C-O -C -O Knits. I don't think it says it on here. Coco Knits. Okay, that's that's where you get it. Um, if your local yarn store doesn't have it, and what it is, I don't know if you have are familiar with these. I know my kids grew up with these slap bracelets, is what they're called. And what it is is it's just this piece of plastic that is straight. And they call them slap bracelets. The kids used to used to have them all the time. It's basically what you do is you just slap it on your wrist and it holds on. But what is so unique about this one is this top portion of it, let's see if I can get a good picture of it, is a really, really strong magnet. And they make all these little tools. I mean, it's so strong that it really is actually hard to get this stuff off that stick on. So they make stitch markers that you can just keep with you handy. They make removable stitch markers. You slap those on. The stitch markers come in two different sizes. They come in small and large, so you can throw a few different sizes on there. There is a darning needle that you can stick on there. And that, I believe, all comes with the kit. It comes with removable markers. It comes with 10 small markers, 10 large markers, and two darning needles. But if you go to the website, which again, I will link in the description box below, there are other items that you can get to work with this. One of them is this fix it thing. It's a double-ended crochet hook. Again, you just stick it, well, not even in the frame there, you just slap it right on there and you have it with you. And they, I know there also is a scissor that will stick on here. And what I thought was adorable was a row counter. And that also will stick on here. Now, again, if I was going to use the row counter thing, I probably would take all of the rest of this stuff off and then just slap the row counter on there. And what I did like about this, I have a bad habit of just pushing this thing accidentally. This does have a locking mechanism, so you can't, you can't push it while it's locked. Um, you have to unlock it, and then it, it just goes like your regular um, row counter. So I thought this was really, really novel to keep with you. How many times do you need a crochet hook? You need a stitch marker. You don't have it handy. The only thing that I would caution um, is that, and the reason why I purchased the 
you just know this is all going to go flying, right? Um, the reason why I purchased the stitch fix, whatever, I'm not even going to take it off. Um, your aluminum items will not stick on here, okay? Only metal. It has to be some form of metal for it to stick onto the magnet part. So if you have a crochet hook that is metal, it will stick. If you have a small scissors that is metal, it will stick. Any of your stitch markers that are made out of metal, they will stick. It just can't be the aluminum like the Susan Bates. I love those, the crochet hook on one side and the little pointy thing on the other side. Sadly, that won't work because that's aluminum. But otherwise, I thought this was a really novel idea. And the thing of it is, it does not fall off. I have had this in my, oh, let's see, what's it called here? Knitters, Knitters Keep is what they call it. Um, I've had this thrown into my knitting bag and nothing has come off of it. Um, and it also comes with this little pouch. Um, and I think this was the extra that I got. I purchased an extra thing and it, there's like a lot in here, you can see, of the variety pack. So it's got more removable stitch markers, round stitch mark, large stitch markers, and small ones. So this is just a really handy item to have. It came in this little pouch, so you can stick it in there. Again, nothing's going to fall off. I haven't found anything loose or whatever in there. Um, I will link below in the description bar where you can find it. Um, so that's, that's something that, like I said, I think is a handy-dandy item for all knitters. And my last thing, oh, wait, I have one other thing. This is something that I got from... Um, SSK. And I was lucky enough to have the most delightful roommate. Her name is Lindy. And she was just a sweetheart. And she also happened to be vending at the event. And the name of her store is The First Draft. <clears throat> she does do yarn, but she also does these absolutely adorable stitch, removable stitch markers. So I got a bunch of these, which I absolutely, I'm crazy for, Knitting Diva, and you know, I'm a Knitting Diva, I had to have that. So we got that one. She had, let's see what else did I get here. This one was, I don't know, it's a spool of yarn, a thread or something, here. There you go, okay. I got one that I gave to my daughter, which was an owl, which she just absolutely went crazy for. Here's another one. And I love them. I'm totally into the removable stitch markers now because I find it's a great way of keeping track of rows. So I really do like that. And then this was the last one I got, which was a pair of scissors. Lindsay's scissors, right? So that was another one. Um, <clears throat> so that was, that was it for that yarn. I did. I fell down the rabbit hole. Last weekend, <clears throat> I met with a bunch of my friends and they were both knitting on this project. And I had to know what it was. I just, it was intriguing me and I sadly fell down the rabbit hole. Let me pull up what it is called. I piled everything and it's now all a big fat mess, but that's okay. It is the Feza, let's see. It is called the Feza Tasseled Poncho and it's a pattern by Stephen B. I'm gonna try to get that on up there. That's it. It really looks like a very simple garter, um, actually I don't know if it's garter stitch or stockinette. I haven't taken the pattern out yet to look at it. Um, what does he say in the description? Stephen and his eye for fashion found new potential in the Feza baby gradient blanket. Between the perfect size, the subtle color shift, and the drape of the yarn, Stephen saw a poncho. The pattern was written Colors more appropriate for streetwear chosen, and tassels were added, completing the blanket's transformation from napping to happening. 
and I just thought it was absolutely adorable. I will put a link to the kits in the um, description bar below, but I did purchase a kit for the, the shawl, the poncho. And this is it. It actually, apparently he started out, it was a baby gradient blanket is what these kits started out for. And then when he transitioned the blanket into a wearable poncho, he came out with colors that were more suitable for a poncho. I, I mean, I don't know, you know, if you want to be wearing a baby blue or a baby pink poncho, but at any rate, this is the color I got. And this is the rust kit. And it starts with a really, really pretty dark rust color. Then it goes into a cream and speckled rust um, color here, and then the cream down here. And I just thought, I mean, I'm all about the packaging, and I just thought this was, I, I mean, that's how I got it in the mail, with really a lovely sealed note inside, handwritten note, which I thought was just so, so nice. I am really, really anxious to cast this on, but I am not going to do it. This is going to be my reward for suffering through my ripping, frogging, and whip progress. You should see what's all over. I mean, everything's all over the place here right now. Everything, including the moose cowl that I was going to rip. Well, it's halfway ripped out now, so it's all down there. So that's it. That's my work in progress. That's everything that I have been doing for the past week. That is my stash enhancement. So we are going to move on to Sensi if I can find where I tossed the catalog, which is right here. I had a catalog. I don't know where I put it. So I'm going to be right back. I'm back. And I think I'm a little more organized right now. So. Let's go with that. Um, anyway, this month, and I had shown the warmer last month, um, last month, last week, it was the still frame camera. That is still available for 10% off for the month of August, so through the 31st. Um, this is the flyer for the month. Okay, again, this is good until August 31st, so the warmer and the fragrance bar, which I do have here, the fragrance bar is called World Traveler. Again, and I described this last week, and I just want to reiterate, this is on sale, by the way, for $4.50 until the 31st. Um, just be advised, this particular scent, this is a bit of a stronger scent than some of the others, and in my opinion, to me, this is more of a masculine scent. To me, this has the, the fragrance of a men's cologne. Um, so if that's the type of scent that you're interested in, if you're looking for something for a boy's room, your son's room, um, a family room where your guy watches TV, plays pool, plays gaming, if you want a fragrance that, that he will enjoy, this would be the one that I would recommend. But again, this is probably not, I, my son burns these. I give these to him. He loves them. His room smells great. I'm happy with that. I don't think this is something I personally would burn in my living room or in my kitchen. Um, but again, for a family room, for a man's room, a guy's room, absolutely perfect. So that's this month's stuff. I just want to show you again. I didn't bring it in this time, but this is the warmer of the month. It is called Still Frame. It is a replica of, I'll date myself, the kind of camera that we used to use, the box camera, and it really has some amazing detail in it. You can see it has the knobs where you would change the, the number we used to have, if you're, if you're not old enough to remember, when you change the film, it would tell you like you would buy a roll of film and it would have 30 pictures on it. So it would, the number would appear in the little box. It says 12 or 13 and you could advance it a little bit with the knobs. And it's, it's all on that, detailed on that camera. So if, if you have memories from taking pictures with these cameras or memories go back to this you might really enjoy this warmer it's really a substantial and even the texture on the warmer feels like those old leather like outsides of the of the camera did so 
Again, on sale until the end of the month. The warmer is $31.50, which is really a great price for that size warmer um, with that much detail in it. The other thing I wanted to mention, this is our spring summer catalog. And it is also coming to an end. There is a new catalog coming out. I have it on order. It's on its way here. I don't have it yet. Um, but the new catalog will be going into effect on September 1st. So what Sensi does is the last month of the catalog, everything in the catalog, with the exception of licensed material, um, MLB products, um, Major League Baseball, there are some college teams, anything that's licensed is not on sale. But other than that, pretty much everything in the catalog is 10% off. And that includes the, um, I'm just going to show you some of the warmers that are still available in this catalog. I have this one in my dining room. I absolutely love it. Um, all of these are on sale until August 31st. And the other thing I wanted to mention, and I try to make sure to mention it in almost every podcast, um, check out when you go to the website, and I will link the website below, and I'll link it in the description box. There is always a sale um, section, and the items in that sale section are discounted even more heavily than 10%, and you can get some phenomenal buys in there. So always check out the sale um, section of the catalog. And the catalog is online on my website, the full catalog. Everything that is in here is in that catalog there. Some of these children's um, warmers, uh, diffusers rather, are going to be discontinued. So um, I did post, and I'll try to put a picture in again, of everything that is going to be discontinued as of the September catalog. So take a look at that, um, but I do want to make sure that you know to check the sale section again because you can get some phenomenal buys there. And also just so you know, there is a section that's called Combine and Save. So if you click on Shop, it'll drop, a menu will drop down and you'll see where it says Combine and Save. Combine and Save is where you, if you purchase, say, a warmer and three bars, it's packages, pre-done packages, but you get to choose the warmer and the fragrances that you want in that package, um, and it will give you a discount. Those are also on sale for the month of August. So again, if you haven't gotten started and you are looking or interested in starting with Scentsy, that is a great place to look. Look at the Combine and Save. You can purchase a warmer and either three bars or six bars, or you can get a warmer and a night light burner and six bars. There are a bunch of different packages, and they're all on sale for the month of August. So check it out. Again, I'll have my website linked below. So that's it for this week. Um, I hope you all have a very good week. I hope you stay cool in this brutal heat. Um, enjoy the rest of the summer. And remember when you knit, to knit with sense.